This is the fight that everyone has been clamoring for, and as of this minute, it is now official. I start training about five days before the fight. Five days before the fight. That's all I need. Uh, all right, let's make a prediction. Sonny's right off to your left side. What about it? Sonny might be great, but he will leave in eight. If he want to go to heaven, I'll get him in seven. He'll be in a worse fix if I cut it to six. If he keeps talking jive, he'll go in five. If he make me sore, he'll go like more. If he keeps talking about me, I'll get him in three. If that don't do, he'll fall in two. And if he run, he'll go in one. And if he don't want to fight, he should keep himself home. The year was 1964. America was reaching into space. And the Beatles reached America. LBJ was president and war loomed in Vietnam. Headlines rose. Martin Luther King touched our conscience. There was Warhol and Bonanza. And in Miami, two men met to decide the one heavyweight championship of the world. Twenty-five years ago last night, this building, which is now under renovation, was reverberating with the anticipation of seeing the reigning heavyweight champion of the world take care of the challenger, a brash young upstart. The champion was Charles Sonny Liston the brash young upstart, Cassius Marcellus Clay. And that name is significant because 25 years ago, Muhammad Ali did not exist. He was a 22-year-old by the name of Cassius Clay. For the next 60 minutes, we will take you back a quarter of a century to an event that not only affected the sport of boxing, but dramatically changed the world of sports. I'm Marv Albert, and I'm joined by my NBC boxing colleague, the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, who was a participant that night. You know, the surprising thing of doing this is the realization of how few people realize who Cassius Clay was and the dramatic impact that he had with his outrageous act. Well, we won't be hearing from Muhammad Ali as he is today because he prefers to let Cassius Clay speak for himself. So let's go back to that era 25 years ago to live the event through the sights and sounds of Cassius Clay, Sonny Liston, and all those who were part of an event that shook the sports world. Charles Sonny Liston was a brooding, enigmatic champion. His background was clouded by prison time and alleged links to organized crime. His age was also a question mark. Officially listed as 31 when he first fought Clay, some believe he was closer to 50. His public image was intimidating, but silent. He clearly preferred to let his actions in the ring do the talking. Could you make a serious prediction of how far you think the fight's going to go, Sonny? Well, it's pretty hard to say because um, I think that he's going to try to run. See? 
Right, he, he said to have had a lot of speed, but uh, you move around pretty good yourself. You think yeah, you'll catch him all right? I don't think he can beat me running, but I do think that uh, he's going to run some. Well, I thought he was the best fighter in the world. He was a just a complete thug, a killer. Liston's an eight to one favorite, and many experts think that's giving Clay the benefit of the doubt. I'm young, I'm handsome, I'm fast, I'm pretty, and can't possibly be beat. You might be young and handsome, but you won't be after I finish with you. You're 40 years old if a day, and you don't belong in the ring with Cassius Clay. No, I shouldn't, because it'd be a disgrace to see the people, let the people see me kill you like I am. Milk Bailey was a longtime cornerman for the champion, Sonny Liston. Sonny figured that he was a loud mouth kid trying to build his ego up because we figured he was scared to death. And that was the attitude the whole camp had that Cassius Clay was scared to death. And that uh, it would only be a matter of time before Sonny stopped him from talking. If they put a mouthpiece in his mouth where he can't talk, I'm gonna kill him. This is the site of the training camp for the champion Sonny Liston. We're in the town of Surfside, located on Miami Beach. And this is where this intimidating man prepared for what he envisioned to be just another easy payday. Ferdy, as you think back to the days of Sonny Liston, what stands out in your mind and uh, what do you remember most about his training procedures? The thing I remember most is the leisurely, almost cavalier way that Sonny Liston was training for this fight. He had a record night train that was a slow blues that he did everything to. And the respectful crowd hushed as Sonny Train would wait for his finished punchline, which was always the same every day. I don't know what I'm training this hard for. I'm gonna knock this kid out in one round. play that whole record and never miss a beat. He was so powerful. Honest to God, when he jabbed you, it was the same as punching somebody, you know? That's it. The best sparring partner he had, if you remember, was Amos Lincoln. And he hit Lincoln with a shot, and Lincoln's helmet flew off. And we thought his head had flew off, you know. This then basically depended on intimidation when he fought. He basically intimidated the opponent. They were intimidated before they even got in the ring. He was a massive guy, and on all circuits, he was just oddly awesome. And plus, he punched. And basically, when he fought somebody like Muhammad Ali, who wasn't intimidated, he became intimidated. I am the greatest. My New Year's revolution is to knock out that big ugly bear, shake up the whole world in 1964, and talk no more. Cassius Marcellus Clay. He had already shown the potential for greatness by winning the gold medal in the 1960 Summer Olympics as a light heavyweight. Although I had been his personal physician since he started boxing, this was my first time working in Clay's corner, and I was struck by his athleticism, by his charisma, and by the blinding faith that he had that he could not be beaten. For those of you who won't be able to see the Clay Liston fight, here's the eighth round exactly as it will happen. Clay comes out to meet Liston, and Liston starts to retreat. If Liston goes back in his father, he'll end up in the rain side seat. Clay swings with his left. Clay swings with his right. Look at young Cassius carry the fight. Liston keeps backing, but there's not enough room. It's a matter of time, and Clay lowers the boom. Now Liston disappears from view. The crowd is getting frantic, but our radar stations have picked him up. He is somewhere over the Atlantic. Listen to Seal rising, and the ref rises down, but he can't start counting till Sonny comes down. Who would have thought when they came to the fight that they had witnessed the launching of a human satellite? Yes, the crowd did not dream when they put down their money that they would see a total eclipse of the sun. 
Angelo Dundee was Clay's trainer then, as he would be for the next 21 years. Cassius Clay, you gotta remember, is the greatest fighter that ever lived in and out of the ring. He changed the whole innovation of boxing. He was the first available superstar. Oh, I thought he was a very promising, uh, sort of a puffed up light heavyweight at the time. I had no dreaming idea that he could win that fight. I didn't give him a chance in hell. Well, annihilation is on. Let's get it on. Wanna go now? I'll let you know. The ain't big enough yet. Paul Collins was so scared, he couldn't even walk. Man, I ain't scared. I'll come to your house at 2 o'clock in the morning looking for you. I ain't scared of nobody. It's gonna be a heart. It's gonna take a good man to whoop me. You look at me, I'm loaded with confidence. I can't be me. I have had 180 amateur fights, 22 professional fights, and I'm pretty as a girl. Like, I don't get hit, I'm so pretty. So that's what I, that's, that's, that's what I'm afraid of. From the luxury of Sonny Liston's Surfside Camp some 100 blocks away to the squalor of South Beach and the, uh, the shabby confines of the 5th Street Gym, it was an exuberant Cassius Clay who trained and entertained. Ferdy, what were those days like? Well, this place was like a zoo. It would fill up wall to wall. Entertainers, people from Motown like Sam Cooke, writers like Norman Mailer, painters like Leroy Neiman, even four guys from across the Atlantic, the Beatles showed up one day, and they would all wait patiently for Ali to be through training. Then all of a sudden, you'd see Ali look for Drew Brudini Brown, who was as confident as corner man and his cheerleader. They would begin a chant, they would begin to joke around, and before you knew it, it was full-blown showtime. You know how great I am. I don't have to tell you about my strategy. I tell you, let my trainer tell you, Bodini, come here. Bodini, tell him, what are we gonna do? You are gonna float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. Ah, ah. rumble, young man, rumble. Ah. That's what we gonna do, you heard it. That's my trainer, he'll tell you. Cassius Clay said to me, Angelo, I got a surprise for you. I said, what's that? He said, I'm gonna bring Drew Brown here. I said, don't do that. The guy will drive me up a wall. Don't do that. I begged him not to bring him. So he brought, no, he won't get in your way, Ange. Don't worry about it. I, he's a nice guy, a lot of fun. So he brought him and he was right. Drew was great. Drew added something to Muhammad. He added a new dimension. Uh, kept him loose as a goose. He was loose anyhow. But Drew added something. Drew was a very important facet of Muhammad Ali's life. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Cassius Marcellus Clay. He's young, he's handsome, they know it. He's a poet, and many people believe he'll be the next heavyweight champion of the world. Cassius, can I ask you how you're feeling now at this point in your I'm training? feeling great. I'm ready to go to war right now. Well, when you say you're ready to go to war right if now... I see that bow on the street, I beat him before the fight. You'd actually take him on before the fight? Beat him like I'm his daddy. I saw Sonny Liston a few days ago, Cassius. Ain't he ugly? <laughs> He he's too ugly to be the world's champ. The world's champ should be pretty like me. Well, he told me to bet my life that you wouldn't go three rounds. Well, if you want to lose your money, then bet on Sunday. Oh, uh, may I ask you because this? Because I'll never lose a fight. It's impossible. Tell him. It's impossible. Never lost a fight in your life. That's any of my fans win when the last time they lost. I'm too fast. Champion from I'm the, the crib. I'm the king. Go on the champ. Go on the champ from the crib. Ah! And let's face it. Look at the fun. The fun this kid created. Now fun is what makes you excel at what you do. If you don't have fun, it turns ugly. I don't like to be involved in a situation where you don't have fun. The media loved Clay's antics, but didn't like his chances in the ring. Liston, almost the first time he hits him, could be one, perhaps two, I'll take one. I look for Liston to win in three rounds. However, if Clay should get beyond the third round, I think with each succeeding round, his chances are better. I like Liston in about one to three rounds. Uh, I think the problem is whether Cassius can hurt Sonny or not. It's the morning of February 25th, the day of the big fight. Now we'll see the craziest way in in all boxing history. On the morning of the fight, Miami Beach Convention Hall took center stage. Incredibly, close to 1,000 representatives of the news media from all over the world were right here 
for the weigh-in. And it wasn't your traditional weigh-in. If the training was a rehearsal, then the weigh-in was a dress rehearsal for the plan that the young Cassius Clay had in his mind. The serious citizens of the boxing establishment descended on the little boxing camp and they said to Clay, stop all the playing around, stop all the nonsense, get serious, preserve the dignity of the weigh-in of the heavyweight championship of the world. Clay agreed until he hit the door. Sham and, and uh, Ali put on histrionics that were unbelievable. And if you look back at the clips, you'll find that that's what happened. He thought he was crazy. And, and Sonny, uh, I don't know, he had a violent side to him that everybody knew about, you know. But Cassius was smart and he was clever. And he, had, he could get on the list and skin more so than anybody ever, ever knew, you know. List didn't know what, what to expect, uh, uh, what came into play there. Tough guys are afraid of guys that are a little goofy, or guys fly over the cuckoo's nest, no, those kind of guys. Tough guys don't know where to go with that. And he was a tough guy, Liston. So Liston's kind of looking at him like this, and then, ah, and then he's screaming and he's hollering. Dr. Robin's taking his blood pressure. Angel, you guys scared to death. This guy's scared to death. He ain't gonna, he's scared. I, go, I ain't gonna make the fight go on. Uh, and I'm, look, I'm listening to the guy, I said, he's only playing, he's only playing. I'm saying, we're having a little fun here. <laughs> Cassius Clay is fined $2,500 for his conduct on platform. Clay said uh, later, he said, uh, anybody would have to be afraid of a crazy man. And that's why I was acting crazy. It was all part of young Clay's master plan, to appear to be crazy and therefore render himself immune to Liston's bullying tactics. What percentage of the fans do you feel will be coming to see him, and what percentage do you feel will be coming to see you? Well, 100% will be coming to see me, but 99% will be coming to see me get beat. Do you really feel that Because they think I talk too much. Four months had passed since the Clay Liston title bout was officially announced. All the training, all the hype was now over. It was fight time. And it was through these doors that the two boxers made their entrance to the ring. However, yet another twist had emerged. As if he hadn't put enough pressure on himself, Cassius Clay decided to announce that morning he had joined the black Muslim religion, an unpopular militant group, and it threatened the entire promotion. Oh my God, it killed the whole fight. We wound up with two bad guys. We had a good guy and a bad guy, like wrestling, which is terrific. Sullen, because I was more wrestling than with boxing. And then we wound up with two bad guys. It was terrible. Because the fight got butchered with that bad guy, good guy routine, went into bad guy, and, and unknown. The unknown scares people. What was a Muslim? I thought it was a piece of cloth. Who the heck knew what a Muslim was? I thought it was a complete non-issue because I felt that Sonny Liston was going in, going in and squash this uh, boastful, braggartly uh, kid like an ant, and, it, and that it would immediately become a non-issue. Despite the uproar, nearly 9,000 people, including celebrities from sports and show business, filled Convention Hall on the evening of February 25th. Millions more watched closed-circuit television and movie theaters around the world. And just before 10 p.m. Eastern Time, Cassius Clay and his entourage made their way to the ring to be followed by Sonny Liston. Let's join the action as it appeared live on the closed circuit telecast with the call by Steve Ellis and former heavyweight champion Joe Lewis. There we see the spotlight on the world champion, Sonny Liston, in his entourage, leading him down from dressing room to ring. A long walk down. Sonny with that hooded robe, the terry cloth white robe. And there he comes up the ring stairs. Willie Reddick, first man through. The heavyweight champion with ropes being spread apart, bounces in, 
Calm, cool, collected, and at the present time, both fighters are in over in the opposite corner of Sonny. Listen, uh, we see at this point the challenger. The challenger catches Marcellus Clay, 22 years of age, unbeaten, 19 straight, going for all the marbles in the boxing business. And right now to the dapper ring announcer, the colorful Frank Freeman. This bout, 15 rounds for the heavyweight championship of the world. The challenger from Louisville, Kentucky, wearing white trunks with red stripes, weighing 210 and one half pounds, the former Olympic light heavyweight champion, Cassius Clay. Clay. his opponent from Denver, Colorado, weighing 218 pounds, wearing the black trunks with the white trim, the heavyweight champion of the world, Charles Sonny Liston. Liston. I want a clean bout, man. In the event of a knockdown, a man at his down must take an eight count. Man standing up will go to a neutral corner while I start counting. And do not resume boxing until I tell you to do so. Now, I want a clean bout. When they order you to break, stop punching and step back. Good luck. Shake hands. All set now. World heavyweight boxing title on the line. 31-year-old Sonny Liston, 22-year-old Cassius Clay. Sonny the champion, Cassius the challenger. Sonny 218, Cassius 210 and a half. A seven and a half pound weight pool. Referee. The capable Barney Felix, brought to you by Theater Network Television. Cassius Clay on the move as we see, looking to get Sonny to lunge, carrying his left hand dangerously low. Note that the champion, Liston, the aggressive man, ooh, a good heavy shot dug under the heart. Sonny has to set the pace. That's the way it looks at the outset. Cassius, awkwardly fast. Good long left lead that might keep the champion a bit off balance. Slippery. Play still in the danger zone in that he's keeping his hands low, but you'll notice one thing if you don't mind, he's at long range with the hands low. We're halfway through round one. Close range, if we look closely, although Barney Felix does want them apart at this point because the hands were tied, Sonny will be the guy that'll keep mauling away. One minute more in the first round. Sonny seems to be trying to slip those left leads. Can't do it too successfully because the challenger is jabbing all over. Body, head, and right hand. The best punch of the fight so far.
We're down to the closing second of this first round, and the long left lead is making the difference so far by Mr. Clay. Yawning. Tell us what you think at the end of one. Well, Steve, I think this was the greatest round of any fight we've seen in a long time. Completely outclassed, Joe, with his speed, his awkward style, his boxing, his natural ability. What did it, in your opinion? Well, uh, I hope that Clay don't get too much confidence. If he do, then he's going he gonna, he gonna to get knocked out. Joe referred to overconfidence. This can happen. The second round was the exact opposite of the furious first as both Clay and Liston adopted a more cautious approach. Well, I didn't talk in the corner. Willie did the talking, and Willie told him to bide his time. And so we figured sooner or later he's going to catch the guy, you know, but he couldn't catch him. Ten seconds more in the second round. The crowd's gonna roar in a few more seconds, that's for sure. <laughs> moving, moving on over to the champion's corner, Sonny Liston. Joe, Joe Lewis, tell us now what they might be telling Sonny. How will he have to fight in round three? Well, I, I'm sure that, that uh, Willie Red is telling Sonny to forget about uh, catch the place here because, you know, he, he pulled back too much and, and it's much too fast for that. But I think some time we're going to bite for a while. The old saying, no, kill the body to hear the dying. All right. We're getting set. Thank you, Joe. We're getting set now for round number three. Liston and Clay. Another jarring right hand that time, folks. Another one, Sonny Robo. Sonny Robo passes, has him hurt. Sonny is, no, no, is, is talking to... below his left eye, he has a cut below the eye, and he's getting hit with all the punches in the book. from the nose also. remaining in round three. Hold the phone. Cassius is a bit hurt. Sonny, still aggressive, very durable. Seven or eight 
seconds more in the third. Clay had cut Liston in the third round, and cornerman Joe Polino worked to stop the champion's bleeding. They're working on the cut below the left eye. It's very difficult to get a shot, but what do you think Sonny's condition, as Joe Polino works on the cut, would be right now? Well, uh, Steve, the, that round looked bad for Sonny, especially when he was putting all, the, all that flurries on Sonny, but I think the last uh, minute of the round, I think Sonny looked right pretty good. Uh, do you think Cassius tired a bit, or what happened a bit toward that last minute of the round? That's hard to say. That's hard to say, but, but Sonny did, but Clay did talk to Sonny. What happened in that round was when he started blinking on me. Blinking, you know, and I couldn't understand what the heck was wrong. Uh, you know, you always think, well, thumb. Less than a minute to go on this fourth frame, fourth round. Ooh. The list and hook started out as a jab, turned it short to a good hook. minute more in round number four. After a strong fourth round, suddenly a crisis in Clay's corner, and it almost stops the fight. I didn't know what the heck went on. So what had happened, come back to the corner, cut the gloves off. I want to prove to the world there's dirty work afoot. I said, whoa, whoa, back up, baby. Come on now. This is for the title. This is the Big Apple. What are you doing? Sit down. So I get him down. I get the sponge, and I pour the water into his eyes, trying to cleanse whatever's there. But I, before I did that, put my pinky in his eye, really. And I put it into my eye. He burned like hell. There was something caustic in both eyes. Joe Polino had used Monsell solution on that cut. Now what had happened, probably the kid put his forehead leaning in on the guy, because Liston was starting to wear with those body shots. And my kid, sweating profusely, went into both eyes. So uh, this is what happened to the kid, you know, what the heck, let's face it, biggest fight of his life and he's blind, he can't see. So he's, he's hitting the panic button. So thank God, got up, bell ring, I says, run. Something wrong with Clay now, uh, something wrong with Clay, uh, something, something wrong with Clay. I see that Joe's eyes, his eyes are bothering him. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't know exactly what happened. They're yelling from Cassius Clay's corner, something got in his right eye. Uh, however, he's blinking badly. Sonny's gonna try to part on.
minute 30 seconds to go in the fifth. Dunny fired his best left hook so far. One minute to go, number five. Four seconds remaining in the fifth. Only ten seconds remaining as Sonny's still moving in. Cash is still bouncing punches away, blocking them. I felt we were home free. I think the, the realization of Liston finally knowing this kid was for real. In round six, we note that Sonny flat-footed stands most of the time. Easy target. Easy. with a variety of punches. We call them combinations. Putting punches together. That's his strong point. We're in the middle of round number six. Cassius Clay still with the faster hands and the better legs, or at least the faster legs. I'll correct myself on that one. Sonny does have sturdy legs. With slightly less than a minute more in the sixth round, the champion has slowed down a bit. The tempo has slowed in the fight. Only 30 seconds to go in the sixth round. Sonny can't seem to slip or knock down that jab effectively. Cassius, Cassius throws it from all angles. Very tricky left lead, left jab. Seconds remaining in the sixth. The crowd's now cheering the challenger. Let's get over to our champion, Joe Lewis. Joe, looking in toward the champion's corner. He's still standing up. They're going to make him sit down. What do you think is going on in Sonny's mind at this point? Well, I think Sonny now is beginning to worry now. At least his corner is beginning to worry now because I, I think that they feel now that, that they have all the confidence he needs to go home to beat the defeat of Sonny. Well, Sonny I said, I can't lift my arm. And Willie said, well, you know, it's another day, it's another time. 
but it broke Willie's heart. I tell you the truth now. Willie was hurt more than anybody else. There you see them, Joe Polino trying to keep that cut closed. Uh, do you feel as though Sonny being busted up a little bit, puffed up a little bit around the face, will this make a difference in Liston's thinking? Well, it has to make a, little, uh, a difference because Liston, uh, I think he, he don't see too well out both his eyes now because they're pretty well puffed out. And I think Clay got all the comfort he needs now. Gosh, is Clay, he's got peripheral vision, sharp, he's looking over my shoulder, he's looking over my shoulder, then <laughs> he got up, we win. <laughs> They might be stopping it. That might be all, ladies and gentlemen. Get up there, Joe. Get up there. Get up in the ring. When we realized in the corner that Cassius Clay had won, we were stunned, disbelieving. Only Clay clearly understood that he was the heavyweight champion of the world, and he took his time to tell the newsmen at ringside that they had been wrong. Shirley Povich, Jim Murray, Ed Pope, all of them. I was so stunned. I was just electrified and there he was right in front of me and a whole bunch of other newspaper men pointing down to us like this I told you I told you I told you exactly what I was gonna do Allah ordained that I would be champion and I told you well we were just sitting there stunned we didn't even know which key to hit first ladies and gentlemen up here in the ring in the ring choir with Joe Lewis Joe what did it the Sonny Liston what happened well uh, I don't want to talk to Sonny uh, Sonny left and doctor stopped the fight because Sonny had thrown his left, left shoulder shelf sh out, out of the socket. Out of the socket. Yeah. As you know, Sonny was missing a lot of left hook. Hold it. He's yelling behind us. Cash is like, wait a minute. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here, come here Cash. I'm the greatest thing that ever lived. No, wait a minute. I don't have it. Now hold it. Move over, Joe. Joe, get on the side. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Bedlam breaking out, bedlam busting out so here. great, I don't have a mark on my face, yeah. and I upset Sonny Liston, and I just turned 22 years old. I must be the greatest. Now, I told the world, I talk to God every day. If God's with me, can't nobody be against me, Sonny. I shook up the world. 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 Wait a minute, Cash, wait a minute. Hold you it. must listen to me. Now listen. I am the devil. All right, hold it. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I must tell you this. I can't be beat, Joe. Uh, wait, hold it. Hold it. They're throwing the chair, but I don't think so. All right, tell us this. All right, Cash. Thank you. I'm great. Thank you, Cash is Clay, the heavyweight champion. This kid was great for boxing. Changed the whole ball game, the whole innovation. Made it a world sport. There's a guy that did it all. There was no match. I want the world to know. I'm so great until Sonny Liston was not even a match. I don't think he quit. I think that uh, Liston became old during the fight. He just hung his head down, you know, and everybody tried to console him. But he said, we'll come back. But for Sonny Liston, it was the beginning of the end. A year later, he would lose the rematch with Muhammad Ali and would never contend for the title again. On this night, the heavyweight spotlight had been focused squarely on the new champion. Oh, I whooped him so bad. Wasn't that good? Make me one of Oh, wasn't that good? Oh, I shook up the world. And so, Cassius Clay set up obstacles and he overcame them. He climbed out on the end of a limb, he sawed it off, and still he won. It was to become his way, and even as Muhammad Ali, whether he was leading the way in boxing, in politics, or with his anti-war views, he became, as he remains today, the greatest. So 25 years ago, last night, Cassius Clay did it. He indeed shook the world, and he did it in his own way. I am the greatest. gonna do? You gonna float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. Ah, rumble, young man, rumble. Ah.